fellow uh, Kevin Marsden, and you know, I really apologise if I've hurt his feelings. I didn't realise he had a medical condition, but I, you know, I should have obviously guessed. Uh, he uh, uh, he uh, he carries some very interesting books, I think, in his very luxurious and well-equipped library. So he's an interesting guy. I think he's a Cockney. I'm not very good with accents. I think he's an ex-soldier. I th Ooh, I think, I think, I think. Oh dear, I think you think too much. Thou dost profess too much. Thou dost brag too much. Thou dost lie too much. You see, no, I'm not a Cockney. And yes, you knew I was a soldier because that was one of the things you attacked me with at the very beginning. You also knew about my situation because Jason informed you. Mm, not looking good for you really, is it? Hey? So we got that. You also know for the fact that uh, what else is there? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What was it? Oh, I have an interesting library. Oh, yes, because I, I did my degree. I bought books to do research with where I was doing my thesis and papers. Which is why I have relatively good knowledge of things, young Mr. Goodman and, of course, Hawkins Esquire. And, yes, like I said, all this information you've had, like lots of other information I gave you at the very beginning. This... It's quite amusing. It is very amusing, I think. But after all, you, you you did state something, and I'm going to link Brian Ball's video below because everybody needs to hear it. It's hilarious. Obviously, I, I take I don't take myself seriously with the tin foil hat. But um, what happened in the '60s was all the people from the East End of London moved out. They went to the new new places that are built from, like Bracknell and Reading. But also they went to Margate in Kent. But you, Mr. Hawkins, were born in Canterbury. So how were you born in the sound of the bow bells? After all, you did state you were a Cockney once. And you have to be born in Lambeth and you have to be born in the sound of the bow bells to be classed as Cockney. It's not just something hereditary. You have to be born in that specific area. That was the tradition of it all. I find that highly amusing. I really do. Well, anyway, today's show will be very interesting. And I would suggest uh, it's a case of on with the show today. And pay attention to the details. Look, reread, rewatch, learn. Because as they said in the Sherlock Holmes. Oh, yeah, that was it. The game is afoot. What we're going to talk about today, uh, and I'm going to go through, is this Raykel story. Because there's more to this than meets the eye, and we have an evidence enough to prove it was the inability and the uh, lack of knowledge that a certain David Charles Hawkins had, which is the reason why he was removed from Raykel. I've got to show you this, because it's very interesting information. But what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to hear what he boasted about in the recent video. So let's listen to exactly what he was boasting about this time. And it was hooked up. Now, let me roll the clock back to the 1980s. Arrogantly or otherwise, I claim I built the world's most powerful interface or dashboard or cockpit or template, if you will, into big data for the oil industry starting in 1981 when I was taken was on, Hesper? I was transferred out of Nigeria. Uh, this was at the uh, uh, Schlumberse um, Research Center in Ridgefield, Connecticut. And I became the coordinator of artificial intelligence and geoscience research. And I worked with a man called Luke Steeles, brilliant individual, he had a double PhD in computational linguistics. And I articulated to Luke Steeles how I thought human experts interpreted big data in the oil industry. And I asked him if he could build a system that could simulate experts working on big data. So we built a basically a pilot system or proof of concept at Ridgefield. I didn't get the support I felt I needed from uh, Schlumberger, so I quit and went back to the UK. And I started work under a private venture with Rakel Defense Electronics, 
to try and build the system that I knew I could build, having built the proof of concept at Schlumberger. Uh, was this Rachel, was this Hesper, uh, David? Yeah, so I, that was the paper I wrote at... Was this Hesper, David? No, it wasn't Hesper at all, was it, David? No, 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 no. Hesper came about well afterwards, 1987-1988, which was to do with Brit oil. Well, we could go that another day. What we got here is the International Journal uh, of Man Match Announcement, Analysis of Expert Thinking by David Hawkins. Uh, January 1983, it was published. But let's first of all, let's go to Mr. Luke Steele. Luke Steele is one of the most prolific and forward thinking people in the field of AI. I say this because when you read his bio, it's incredible. But here we have him in 1980, research at Schlumberger Doll Research Labs, a geophysical measurement company. So this is why Hawkins was at Richfield, because Hawkins was dealing in geophysics because he was a wireliner. He was dealing with data that was collected from uh, the, the logging systems that they worked on. So we have it there in 1980, but more importantly, Luke Steele was the leader of the Geophysical Expert Systems Group. So in other words, the person in charge was Luke Steele. Again, here's another paper by Luke Steele, but uh, let's have a look at some of his uh, outstanding credentials. He founded the Sony Computer Science Laboratory in Paris in 1996 and became the first director. Currently, currently he is an ICREA research professor at the Institute of Evolutionary Biology, CSICUPF. Steels has participated in dozens of large-scale European projects and more than 30 PhD theses have been granted under his direction. He has produced, wait for it, over 200 articles and edited 15 books directly related to his research. During the past decade, he has focused on the theories for the origins and the evolution of language using computer simulations and robotic experiments, experiments to discover the testum. Role in scientific organizations. Role in journals. Publications. Research projects. This guy, Mr. Luke Steele, is an AI expert. He's not pretending. He's living the dream. He's the AI expert. But here we have, and I brought this up because I've decided to show you this. It's an 11 page paper by Luke Steele's. There's, well, I just found one of them, just pulled out one of them for a reason. So we go down to page 11, and I'm going to show you something that's very important. Especially when you're writing papers, references. So this is 11 page reference, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 1920, uh, probably about 40 references in an 11 page document. So, how do you know it's how to read a reference? Well, for, for a start off, what it tells you is, for instance, here, Leve DLL Spicer A 2013. Contestus Imageries and the Cultural Political Economy of Climate Change Organizations. 20 bracket 5, 659 to 678. So between pages 659 and 678 is the information. So when he's writing this paper, he's telling you the book, he's telling you the page, he's telling you where to go. So when you research it, you can say, okay, he said this, well, there's the reference, I'm going to go to this reference, and you go to the reference to embellished what the guy is saying you probably can't read it so you, I'll link it below so you can see for yourselves what's more important to me is this analysis of expert thinking David Hawkins 1983 there's the 
basic abstract of it, but I found David Hawkins, Ridgefield, July 15th, 1981. So it says July 15th, 18, 1981. Publication date, 1981, 10th of the 10th. But we have publication date, uh, publication date, January 1983. So there's a slight discrepancy here, and there's obviously somebody will have an answer to that. I'm sure they will. But more importantly, I've come to the references. This is his references. I know these are his references because there's four of them. A study in Scarlet by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. No page, no reference, no whatever. Webster's New College Dictionary. No pages, no what, what, what from there. Glossary of Geology. What, where do you, what did you get from there? Where was the pages? Where's the information you got it from? Harvey Black, Gerald Milton, Raymond Murray. Origin of Sedimentary Rocks. Yeah, great. How big is the book? It could be 400 pages long, and you've taken, say, for instance, from page 85, but there's no reference to that. But surely, Kevin, surely he hasn't. It's, it's just that. Huh? Well, let's go to the main pages at the beginning, and let's go to page 3, which is the thing there. So, acknowledgement, references. Do, uh, do we have a bibliography? No, we don't have a bibliography. It's just references. It's four references. That's it. Of a 70-page or 47-page document. With four references that you can't research anything from it. It shows that, 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 this, that he has no idea how to write an academic paper for a start off. So, there shows another flaw in this whole story of Hawkins. It shows his inept and ability not to understand how to write a paper. Expert system in hearts of commitment with oil and gas industry. So that's important. We we need to know that the oil and gas industry is still using uh, expert systems. Petroleum and orders expert engines. Another one there. And of course, putting expert systems to work. 1988. So we got another, you know, another part there talking about expert systems in the oil. And, so this is big in the oil, oil industry. I want to go back to. He means to help reverse Britain's drain of computer talent. Now this article is very skewed, and I'm going to show you why. His original decision to return in September 1981 ran current to the current trend in which leading United States electronics and computer companies are enticing many young British programming experts with the offer of high salaries. Now, taking on board that Hawkins said he built this big database, and he's if excused by arrogance to say that I built the biggest interface, yeah? He would be like rocking horse gold he was he would be he, there, were, there would be offers coming at him right left and center because this was a big thing in the 80s doesn't talk about that does he no so back in 1981 hawkins telephoned sir ernest harrison boss of rachel one of britain's top electronic companies hawkins persuaded harrison to set up a division of the company to specialize in artificial intelligence with hawkins as the head so according to this document hawkins persuaded Harrison into creating this department which he ran he ran as the managing director for two years Hawkins with a team of nine worked away on special computer programs for the oil industry with these programs called expert systems non oil specialists blah 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 events didn't quite work out the way Hawkins expected Rachel decided it did not want to sell these systems so he said that Rachel ditched the oil field expert system side of things is that true? We'll find out. That didn't satisfy Hawkins, who's left to start a fresh new company, Oilfield Expert Systems, which we can go into. He also talks how he's in allegiance with this guy from Burgess Hill. But this is the sentence here. I left Rayco amicably, says Hawkins. We both decided to concentrate on the areas that we knew best. Ah. But in 2010... A few changes appear again. 
And this was in that Washington Examiner, which is the dog not barking, which comes from a study in Scarlet, the Arthur Conan Doyle book, which is the short story of Sherlock Holmes. Hawkins said he resigned from Schlumberger in the 1980s after the company stopped promoting people with oil industry experience to its top management ranks and started parachuting in hedge fund managers, attorneys and accountants to run the company instead. But hang on a minute, Hawkins said he was in charge of this organisation at Schlumberger, so he's high up, running this department with these people underneath him. Things don't add up here really, do they, chap? Hey, Hawkins, things are not really adding up too well here. So, here we have the article, A New Scientist in July 1982, when Hawkins first started out. David Hawkins, who used to work in the US for the oil, uh, oil service firm Schlumberger itself, are much interested in expert systems, has returned to the UK to run Ray Coldacre's new business. He hopes to employ about 15 computer specialists by next year on expert systems. That was in 1982. Let's go forward a year, shall we? And this one was written, New Scientist, 28th of July, 1983. A year later. Rayco Expert System started up last year after David Hawking, now the firm's managing director, grew restless in his job in the US. He made a transatlantic telephone call to Sir Ernest Harrison, boss of the Rayco Decker Electronics Group, asking for support in setting up an advanced computer company. So the original idea was Hawkins wanted a backer to his new idea of computer company. But instead, Sir Ernest responded authorising an investment of nearly half a million in a division of his electronics combine that's, and that has still to sell a product. So in other words, for a whole year, they spent half a million on jack shit. Nothing. Diddly squat. Nada. Zip. Nothing. The Department of Industry, now trade industry, also chipped in with a grant of £230,000. That's British taxpayers' money that Hawkins stole. That he, he stole from the British taxpayer to create this bogus group that could do nothing for over a year, hadn't produced anything. Hadn't produced a damn thing. But what happened in 1984? So don't worry, in 1984 it gets better. In the search for hardware, oh, let's make this a little bit bigger shall we? Let's make it a little bit bigger. In the search for hardware that could deliver the power that AI users need, Raykel and Norse Data have joined to develop a machine that could rival Dexfax, the traditional workhorse for AI research, writes Tony Durham. Now, this article was written on the 20th of September 1984. I don't know if it's on here. But if you go to Brian Bull's site, you'll see it there. It'll tell you exactly where it's come from. But I want to read the first paragraph. Following a disastrous attempt to sell expert systems to an unresponsive oil industry, the Raykel Group is launching a fresh attack on the artificial intelligence market, this time with hardware and programming tools. One lesson the UK Electronics and Communications Group learned from the Rayco Expert Systems failure. Let's read that again again. One lesson the UK Electronics and Communications Group learned from the Rayco Expert Systems failure was the running a large knowledge based system can bring a supposedly powerful computer to its knees. So, in search of hardware that could take the strain, Rayco approached Norwegian computer maker Norse Data. The two firms have launched a one million joint venture with Rayco holding 51% of the shares. So, basically, if you go to uh, Brian Ball's site, and I'll link it below, the, the video you need to watch, 
he explains this quite clearly. Hawkins was using uh, uh, sim, sim, symbiotic, I keep saying the word symbiotic, sim, symbolic computers, LM2 Lisp. These only had one megabyte of memory. Later on, when Hawkins created his firm, uh, Oilfield Expert Systems Limited, they used sim, uh, Symbolics 3, uh, 3600, which was the size of a fridge, because it needed the memory capacity. He was using an office computer to try and create this. So in other words, Hawkins didn't build anything, because if he had built it, like he said, in America at Schlumberge, he would have been able to recreate it by saying, this is what I need, boom, 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 and this is what you get, boom, 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 boom. He didn't do that, because Hawkins didn't have a clue. What Hawkins was trying to do was blag his way through it by using the brains of the computer guys, the computer science guys that were attached to him in his department to build it, and, and they only produced 2,000 were uh, 2,000 lines of code because they did not know how to use Lisp. They weren't Lisp centric. Uh, you really, 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 really can't make this up. So we have that. Now let's get to the next part. So here we have Symbolics 3620 in 1983. Later than planned, Symbolics introduced the 3600 family of Lisp machines, codenamed the L machine. Intelli, the 3600 family was an innovative new design inspired by the CADR architecture, but a few, uh, shared a few of its implementation details. There we can see the actual hard, the hard drive and everything else to do with it, that, what we known as the tower, which was quite big. So the 3600 was the size of a fridge. So we now know that Hawkins learnt that the, the, the computers he was using at Raykel wouldn't do the job. They, they didn't have the memory, they didn't have the capability. But here's a guy who calls himself this expert, and he would have known this. He would have understood how much memory you would have needed. This is why people like Luke Steele are the experts, which reminds me, Ah, oh, so I will. I'm going to find this guy's email address and I'm going to contact him, and we'll get this cleared up once and for all. We'll get the full story of why Hawkins left Schlumberger, because that's another interesting factor here. I think that should be quite an interesting email if he responds back. Let's hope he does. I'm not guaranteeing it, but let's hope he does. So anyway. Let's look at this one. Special Operations Executive. You see, in this video, Hawkins also goes on about the Special Operations exec Executive and stating that Lord Rothschild was the guy running it. Lord Rothschild, this, that, and the other. Now, I'm going to give you two documents here. That one, and the special from the uh, National Army Museum, Special Forces Operations Executive, and... Brigadier Colin Gibbon, Gubbins, who was a commando, was the, the director, and Doctor, oh, what was his name? Doctor, 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 who was in charge of the Doctor Dalton, who headed the Ministry of Economic Warfare, but was not a member of the War Cabinet, which would have given him given greater access to Churchill initially due to it. So he was that guy there. So he had Doctor Dalton and Gubbins. So those are the two. We know about. Well, let's talk about also OSS, a prime a special operations person, department of the Office of Strategic Services. Here, it will tell you the story of how the OSS was formed. You won't see the name Sir Lord uh, Lord Rothschild involved in it, but you will see this name, Alan W. Dulles. Those who know. Anything will know exactly who he was and what he did. 
So, here's my challenge to both Hawkins and Goodman. And I know you're watching Goodman because that's why you kept butting in about Hesper to Hawkins. You're desperate to try and save Hawkins, Goodman. You're not. Because now I'm going to give you an open challenge, Mr. Goodman. In fact, don't worry about Hawkins. Hawkins will just waffle his way. I'm giving you an open challenge. You prove to me that Lord Rothschild was running and coordinating and to, uh, was in control of the Special Operations Executive. That's your challenge, Jason. But you won't do it. And I'll tell you why you won't do it. Because you know that you're going to fail to prove that. And what's more importantly, it's not going to look good for your brand. And your brand is going down the toilet. More and more, you have this idiot Hawkins on. Because I can just tear apart everything and anything he's saying. Because I'll do it with documented proof. As you've seen with this video. Because I know you watch Goodman. I know you do because you're the guy that puts the thumb down. It's a sort of pathetic childish thing you do. So there's your challenge. As you can see Hawkins didn't build the computers. Though Luke Steele did. And I am going to be contacting Luke Steele. But you could also contact Luke Steele and you can get it first hand yourself. You could get the evidence as well. Wouldn't that be interesting? Bet you don't. I bet you're a real coward. In fact, that's what you are, Goodman. A coward. Toodle pips.